this episode, a key event doesn't happen. We take a few turns on a circuit and spring into action. If your 190E doesn't start or it starts and stalls, it might just be your fuel pump relay. So get behind the wheel and close the door. Hook up your seatbelt. This will keep the buzzers and beepers quiet. As you turn the key, turn your head to the left and listen. That's the sound of the electric fuel pump running to build pressure to start the engine. If you don't hear it, the fuel pump relay is our prime suspect. It's time to get out and get under the hood. Now on your 190E, the fuel pump relay sits on the exhaust manifold side of the engine compartment, and it may be out in the open just behind the battery, although it might be under a cover held in by screws. The relay is a black rectangular box. It's situated right next to the overvoltage protection relay. Grip it by the sides and gently wiggle it straight upwards and pull it out. It plugs in by two rows of pins, and it is these pins that are going to help us find out if what is inside has gone bad. By jumping across two of the pins, we are going to bypass some internal components. This is a popular workshop manual, and it's just filled with all sorts of helpful things, but they're unrelated to our no-start problem. For instance, great for rebuilding the transmission, but not what we need today. But way in the back on page one zillion and six is a listing of electrical components. Here it is, fuel pump relay N5 slash uh, one, and it lives at uh, seven H on the diagram. Okay, N5 slash one shows all the pinout locations for the relay. If we bridge these two terminal pins, 30 and 87, we will bypass the relay and give electricity to the pump. Next to each pin on the relay is molded a number that matches the diagram. I'm going to use this black marker to highlight the two pins we need, 30 and 87. And notice there's a plastic center pin just to the right of these two pins. Now I'm gonna need about an inch or so of bare wire stripped and bent into a sort of bow tie shape. Eh, kind of like a figure eight or an infinity symbol. Just connect the two pins that we need and make sure it doesn't short out any other pins. Notice the rows of contacts inside the plug that match the pins. Three in the back, and four in the front. The six-cylinder cars have two extra pins. Back under the hood, remember to turn the relay around correctly. Press it in tightly, and notice that the fuel pump should start to run continuously. Back in the driver's seat, if the engine starts, buy a new fuel pump relay. The jumper wire is not a repair. In fact, it is super ultra dangerous to drive around running the fuel pump this way. There's no way to shut off the fuel with the key if you're in a crash. When you order, make sure to match the relay to your year, model, engine, and transmission. And there's a lot of compatible aftermarket versions available. This upper relay is for an automatic with the M102 four-cylinder engine. Notice the designation kick down that shows it's for an automatic transmission. The lower relay is out of a 1989 six-cylinder car with a different cold start circuit. Now, you may be able to repair your relay enough to trust it as an emergency backup. We'll start by opening up the plastic case to access the circuit board. A waterproof silicone seal runs around the whole perimeter of the base. I'll slice through that with a small hobby knife. Be sure to cut all the way around. There are two reinforced lugs on the side of the case to pry against. 
bend the side of the case away gently to avoid cracking it. With the base free of the case, you can gently slide the circuit board out. Now we can see this is an aftermarket replacement relay for the four-cylinder engine. Notice all the discrete pin-through board components. There are resistors, capacitors, some relay coils, an IC chip, and even a small board with surface mount devices on it. I know this is a newer aftermarket relay by the date code stamped on the outside of the case. This other relay is from the six-cylinder engine. The through-the-board components have solder joints on the back. That is where we should look first. There are often damaged solder joints, and that will cause a broken circuit. Now, you don't need a magnifying glass. A great way to get a really close-up look of the components is to use the camera on your phone. You can easily zoom in close and systematically snap pictures to survey all of the circuitry. What I'm looking for is any cracked solder joints. And it doesn't take very long. This joint, for one of the relay coils, is cracked right near the output pin. Before reflowing the joint, I'm going to apply some soldering paste. This should be a big help against the corrosion that's already there. A steady hand and sharp eye will get this done fast. I no longer have either, so I'm going slow and taking my time and removing any excess solder. I don't need to accidentally bridge anything here. Now once that cools, I can run a little test on the workbench. If I put 12 volts negative to pin number 31 and positive to pin 15, that will pick the relay coils. That smaller coil on the right transfers power to the larger one in the center. That cracked solder joint was making this power handoff intermittent. Let's get this back together now. There's a key slot molded in the case that only allows the board to be installed one way. Gently slide the repaired board back into the outer case until it snaps in place. You can reseal the edges with silicone gel to reduce the chances of water contamination. Now if we go out under the hood again, we can test this backup part. Now if it works, we're going to keep it in a plastic bag in the glove compartment as an emergency backup. And there you have it. Listen for the pump to cycle. Pull the relay and jumper it. If the engine starts, you've found the culprit. Order a new relay and install it. Check and see if you can resolder the old one for an emergency backup. Thank you for watching.